Well, what drive works is when you're in normal operation mode, the input and the output contactors are closed. Power is run through the input and the output contactors through the drive to the motor. And one of the biggest problems that we have is a variable speed drive, usually varying the speed of the motor. As things accelerate and, and loads are increased, the, the wires that you're going through get hotter, they expand. Uh, when they slow down, um, the, the wires contract. Also, when you start to have loose connections in the input or the output contact. If you have a failure, usually it's the input contactor shorts out because the loose wires are, get arcing and that actually damages the drive. So your bypass package that you have as your emergency backup that you failed to maintain uh, took your drive out. VFDs like uh, the ones that Tico Westinghouse sells, the MA7200, uh, has a mean time engine failure rate of about 450,000 hours. Uh, we actually have drives out there that are over a million hours. When you put a bypass into a system, the mean time between failure rate of a bypass package that is not maintained is about 8,000 hours. So typically if you're going to have a failure uh, in your system, it's going to be the bypass, not the drive. Let's talk about costs. A lot of specifications out there call for bypasses as, on drives as low as one horsepower. Let's talk about an MA, you know, the MA7200 cost. List price is about $580 times whatever multiplier you're going to get. The bypass, and this is just for the MA7200, the bypass that goes with it, the three contactor bypass, is about $1,800 list price. And that's for the bypass with the drive. What, you know, take, take a look at this. You can actually buy two drives for less price than the bypass package. The memory is all stored in the keypad of this unit. If something fails on this particular unit, which, you know, odds are is not, is not ever going to happen, but to say you take a lightning strike or water gets into the drive, something catastrophic, the keypad is electrically and optically isolated from the rest of the drive. You can actually, in a space of about 20 minutes, take your spare drive, put it in, take the keypad off of the old one, put it onto the new drive, hit download, you're physically running less than eight seconds later. It's not difficult to do. You don't have to maintain the drive. Once it's installed, everything is power lugged. Uh, you have a circuit breaker, you might have a reactor in front of it. But, you know, this doesn't make sense to me. Why are you going to spend this kind of money on a small drive package? Say you have 30 drives in a building going in. You want to drive with a disconnect of some sort, maybe a reactor, depending on, on the harmonic situation that you have. Uh, buy a couple of spares. You can put, and say you have one to 35 or you know, one to 40 horsepower drives. You can buy a 20 and you can buy a 40. That 40 horsepower can be put on the one horsepower drive without an issue. Make it as simple as possible. You want to drive with a circuit breaker, you want to drive uh, with a fuse disconnect, you might want a reactor depending on, on what's going on, but that's it. You don't want anything else unless you know, it's, it's a life safety issue. The only time that I want to put a bypass on there, as long as it's properly maintained, is where people's lives are. Where do people's lives fall into jeopardy? If you're in a building and you have a fire, where do you want to do it? If you're in an office building, if you have an office stairwell, you want to put it in the stairwell. If it's a return fan, you want to be able to get the smoke out so the fire department can actually get in. So you want smoke purge system. Operating room theaters, hospitals. And I'm not talking the lobby, I'm talking the operating room theater, I'm talking critical care areas, ICUs, things like that, where you need airflow no matter what, and it's designed to do it. Another big issue, you know, are computer rooms. Another big one. If you have a computer that fails because of overheat, millions of dollars can be lost. That is the only places I would ever do it. Uh, bypasses are a waste of time on, on supply fans. If you have a damper system, VAV system, you put a bypass on it and it goes across the line, uh, you're going to blow your ductwork, or you're going to go out on static, you know, high static pressure. It's not going to work for you. Why waste your money doing it?